Hello, my little lovelies. Right, so we got so far with the art and uh, we managed to have a look at our Mayan patterns and we chose what we wanted to do. And that is what we got up to um, the point that we reached on our Zoom call on Friday. So since that point, all I have done, as you can see, if I can actually pick it up, is to just go over my patterns in pen. Um, only so that when I put another piece of paper over the top or a piece of material, I'm more likely to be able to see my lines through because they're now in black marker. OK, um, so there's two different methods that we're going to go through because I don't know what resources that you will have at home to do this. Right. OK, so I'm just going to move you so you can see. So if you have a look here, there is my material. And I can quite nicely see my patterns through there. That's uh, nice and clear for me. That's going to be easy for me to use. Um, there are several things that I'm going to need. So you will need several things. I've got myself a bowl, a spoon, um, some water. I won't need that much. Um, some flour. Any old flour will do. I've got plain flour, but that just happens to be what I've got most of. So the first thing I need to do is to mix my paste um so for this i'm going to need flour and water okay, let me just adjust you there you go okay so i'm going to first of all just add a couple of spoons of my flour into my bowl and i'm going to add in some water and give it a stir now i want this to be a reasonably thick paste but not so thick that it looks like I'm making scones. So there, look, you see, I've got in a big lump. I need to be able to pour it. Okay, so I think this is around about right. It's runny, but it's still quite thick. Okay, so that is the sort of consistency I want. Okay, so I am now looking at my pattern and I'm thinking what parts of this do I want to stay the same color as my material? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is the center of the eye. I'm going to keep that the same color. Okay, so there you can see, I've got enough of a blob on there for it to show through. So that piece of my material is going to stay the same color as, the, as we're starting off with. So I'm gonna leave it to dry um, probably for about 20 minutes or so before I start adding any colour. Right, okay. Um, once you start layering on your flour, you will find that you're going to start putting some paint on. So this is where you might find um, that you've got to have a look around your house to see what paint you've got. Um, you can use watered down acrylics. They're really fine. All the colours, add some water to them to thin them down. Um, you could also use watercolour. Just be aware if you do use watercolour, it will give a more washed out look to your piece and you obviously can't wash that. So at this point, I'm going to need to decide what colours I'm going to be using for my design. Personally, I'm going to go for um, yellows, oranges, reds and probably go into a black or maybe a brown. Um, so I'm going to choose my colours. I then need to make sure that I know the order in which I'm going to do my colours. So I'm going to start off with the lightest. So for me, the first colour I'm going to apply to my fabric is going to be the yellow and gradually building up to the darkest. So mine is probably going to go yellow, orange, red, and then finally the black or the brown. Um, you need to sort of have a plan as to the order that you're going to be doing yours. So always the lighter colours first. OK, so I've given this chance to dry. It must be absolutely dry before I start adding any more colour. So I've started off, I can see there's my brush dye. dye. Um, if you do use this stuff, just be aware that it does dye everything, including your hands. Um, so I'm now going to paint the bits that I think I want to be yellow. So I'm going to add a little bit here to the end of his little spike there. And I think he's going to have yellow teeth because that sounds quite revolting. So I'm going to just, I'm not doing it very carefully because at the end of the day, I'm going to die over this. But I just want enough so that I know we've got a good amount of colour on it. 
Um, and I think I'm going to do a little bit up this end um, as yellow and maybe the bottom of his neck down here. Okay. So my next job is to cover up the parts of my material that I want to remain yellow. Okay, so before I can go on and add anything else to this, I need to make sure that my actual first coat of colour is completely dry before I add anything else to it. So I need to manoeuvre it around, make sure it's on the right place, which I think it just about is. And actually, for more fiddly bits, I'm going to use oops, my cocktail stick. Where is it? Oh, there it is. It with the uh, glue, the the glue, the flour and water paste on it, just so I can be a little bit more careful. So now I'm going to go over those areas that I want to stay yellow. So I've got to be more careful this time because obviously, if I'm doing teeth on this, that's going to be a little bit more. Um, tricky than um, a lot of it okay so I'm applying it only very carefully to the bits that I want to stay yellow I'm then going to put this to dry again so when you're doing larger sections of the material you'll probably want to leave it to dry overnight uh, just to make sure it's thoroughly dry at the moment I'm cooking a roast dinner which is quite handy because I've just put it on top of the cooker which is nice and warm and it's drying off quite quickly um, but it's still taken a good half hour for it to dry. So I'm going to carry on doing that and let it dry and then I'll come back to you when I start applying the orange. Right, so the yellow has all dried off, as has all the flour paste. So now I'm going to paint on where I want this to be orange. So I'm going to have an orange little curly bit there. I'll do that for all the bits that I want to be oranged and then um, repeating the process really. So I will have to make sure that all my paint has dried, then put on my flour and water paste to maintain the bits that I want orange. And when the flour and water paste is dry, then I can paint on my next colour. So I kind of go through this process until I've built up all the colours that I need. So I'll get on with that and I'll rejoin you when I'm on to my final colour. Okay, so I've continued with my painting and then letting it dry and then applying the next colour. So I've now got on there yellow, orange and red. And you can start from the back, seeing how those colours work. So I've come on to applying my last colour, which was going to be black. I'm might have a play with the rest of the material. So I'm going to just do the bits around where this is. And this will be my final time to dry. So this whole process does take um, quite a long time. It is one of those things that you will need to do um, over a period of time. You have to do a lot of drying in between. Okay, so what I will do is I will apply all this and then I'll come back to you when this is all dry and we'll talk about what we're going to do because obviously we don't really want the flower um, paste to stay on. Okay, um, so this is my finished piece now. And when I actually, you can probably hear it start to crack because by the time we get to this stage, the flour and water paste is quite thick. So what it should be able to do, as you can see, is start picking it off. So my next job, which is actually strangely satisfying, is to go around and pick off all of this flour and water, this dried up flour and water paste that I've put on. Okay, so when I've done that, I'll add a photo at the end for you. Hello, so I thought I'd go through with you the second technique that we can use to uh, do our pretend batik. Um, so today I've got myself some watercolour paints and a piece of paper. I also have my patterns that I made and I've gone over with black pen. 
so that when I put my piece of paper over, hopefully you can see that, but you can see my pattern underneath. I've also got myself, oh, excuse my itchy nose, a wax crayon. Now I've sharpened the end of that uh, using a knife. If you have to do that, make sure you ask an adult to do it. It's only because I only had fat white crayons and I need it to be a little bit more accurate than that. Right, okay, so I'm going to start off. So wherever I put my wax on my piece of paper, because I'm using watercolors, the watercolors can't stick to the wax. Okay, so I'm gonna think about parts of my pattern that first of all, I want to remain the same color as the paper. So in this instance, they want to stay white. So I'm going to do around his eye. I'm gonna do that a couple of times just so it really stands out. Then I'm gonna think about what other colors I want to use in my picture. This time I'm gonna go for blues and greens, I think. So the next color I'm going to choose, my next lightest color, I'm gonna go for this nice light blue over here. And I'm gonna paint around here. And you can already see where the eye is. I can go over the center. Can you see that? Let me move you a little bit. Hopefully you can. The center, well, the, I can go to the center, but the bit where I'd actually put the wax crayon won't go through. So I'm gonna paint some bits this color um, that I want to stay this color. And then when it's dried, I'm gonna apply some more wax to where I want this color to stay. Okay, so this has dried now. So looking at my picture underneath again, I'm going to go over with my crayon all the bits that I have colored in blue. I must make sure not to go over those lines, otherwise it will show up when I come to apply my next color which is why I've sharpened my crayon so I can be as accurate as I can possibly be when it comes to this part. Okay, so when I've gone over all of these bits, I'm then going to select my next color and start painting on the next pieces that I want to go over. So I think, i that quick brush off. My next colour, I'm going to go for a dark blue, so more like a navy blue. So I'm going to do the end of his snout here. I think this is supposed to be a dragon. I'm maybe not the best drawer in the world, but that's what I envisaged it was. So I'm going to do his teeth, navy blue, because let's face it, who doesn't want navy blue teeth? That's lovely. Probably the dentist when you go, they probably won't appreciate your navy blue teeth. But hey, this is art, we can do what we want. So I'm gonna go over these bits. Uh, when I finish going over in this color, I'm gonna leave it to dry again, and then basically repeat that procedure until I come to my final color. So I'll do a bit more to this, and then I'll come back to you near the end. It's color. So, I'm going to put that to dry now before I can do anything else. Okay, so I've finished that now. I'm gonna come in behind, this is gonna be my final color, sort of like my background color. I should have covered the wax everywhere that I don't want this color to go. So as I apply the purple, you're able to start seeing the whole of my dragon, my Mayan dragon. Okay, so let me just put you back up. Hello. <laughs> um, that is the basic technique. That is the simple version of our batik. Um, I hope you get on well with that one. Maybe you want to give it a go anyway. Maybe have a go at both. Entirely up to you. Okay, have fun with it. <laughs>